is up. Okay, there we go. Now I'm in the match. So, Ghoulfrog and Drone will be playing first on Battle for Planet 17. They will be... Well, they'll be playing that as soon as it's... As soon as Drone decides to unspec, I guess. Oh, okay, so apparently Drone is the number one player? A little weird. The latter might be slightly out of date, but yeah, Drone is... Neck and neck with Golda for the number one spot. But we'll see if Golda's able to reclaim that in the tournament. Because the tournament's kind of more meaningful, I think. The latter is all good, but when you have a tournament, you can really see how players play over the long haul. Like, endurance matters a great deal. Hey, who, who can actually last? Who can win over the course of however many games? In a double limb tournament... It could be like three here, then three here, then three here, then another three here if it's really neck and neck. It's like over the course of 12 games, just in the final section, who can win? That's a big question. Not to mention earlier on as well, especially when you get to the loser's round in this case, because it is best of one, it is it is knockout very quickly. Oh, and of course I should do this because it is quarterfinals, game one. I did not get myself enough room for this thing. You know, maybe I should just forget the date. We don't have that many tournaments in a month. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm talking shop too much. I am sorry. So that should be the longest map name, I think. Let's Yeah, it will be Drone and Google Frog. That is starting up right now. That should be reasonable. I think that's a reasonable amount of information. On the bottom, letting you know what is going on, what game is being played, what round is being played. The players, of course, are shown in the player list when the game itself starts. And is Google Frog also streaming? Not sure if Google Frog is also streaming. Oh, I see, they're closing my stream. Night, good, good Google Frog, I appreciate that. It is always good to close the stream when you're playing. Because stream sniping is not appreciated. I don't know how many people do it, but... I mean, this game is one where information does change pretty quick, so it's probably not as big of a deal as it could be. Still, it's it's not cool. We are going to be playing on Battle for Planet 17, which is a map that I have shown off quite a bit recently. So I will go over it, as I tend to. Although the players, of course, starting without... Oh, no, they're not starting without me. I actually have a chance. I will have a chance to get myself set up. This is a very bright map, so i got to be careful. Anyway. What the heck? Right, so Battle for Planet 17 is a rather asymmetric map. It's the maxes are the same value; they're all plus two, but they're spread out in an interesting pattern. So the north side has this giant area that they have, basically this dried out bay that they have for themselves. While the south area, they have the ridge a bit closer to them, so they can get to it much faster than the north side. But at the same time, they have they have less territory, so they're easier to contain. Google Frog over to the north, going for the Shieldbot Factory, while Drone in the south, going for the Cloakybot Factory. This is also the only start spot, pretty much. It's this corner and this area in the center. That's it. There isn't all that much flexibility in start location. But both players setting up really quick, getting their basic economy going very quickly. Google Frog opting for wind generators, while solar plants are Drone's choice, and solar plants also set up nicely as a wall, so Google Frog cannot attack from the south side. Goofrog is going to try to do that with the bandit right now, and these solar panels will stop that. Although I do think, and over to the north as well, just to make sure. So Google Frog being rather defensive, well, sorry, drone being rather defensive. Google Frog, on the other hand, they're focusing more on getting some quick, cheap economy, which unfortunately on this map may not be the most valuable. 
Wind generators don't, like, even on the highest area on this map, if I go to the highest, highest area, yeah, their minimum is still 0 0.2. So they are not super reliable on this map. They need to be supplemented by solar collectors. Otherwise, it's not going to be too efficient. Anyway, Goofrog able to stop Drone's initial scouting harassment, and Goofrog's own initial scouting harassment forced back. Anyway, as I was going to say, these solar plants, I still think, or solar panels, really, I think, should be set up so that it's kind of like, more of a line like this. Because that way, what ends up happening is the units kind of get messed up in their pathing. Like you have this. And so the units end up trying to go in. They think they have a chance to get in. And then there's something in the way. And it's just, nope, you can't get in. Or even leaving it slightly open to mess with their pathfinding. I've been experiment experimenting with that myself to see if I can make it work in a really effective way. I should also point out that drone being at the corner means that this solar panel thing is much more effective than anything Google Frog could do. They could have solar panels on both sides, but it's not as effective as what drone can do. Because drone has the corner to go against. While Google Frog, they still have a pretty wide area to defend, even if they do that. And... Drone forcing Google Frog back a fair bit. Google Frog still able to get rid of most of Drone's glaives. However, Drone has forced Google Frog back enough. That's what matters. They are able to expand in their area. In their main territory, they can expand, so they are they're safe at this point. They've also made sure to upgrade the commander. So the commander is level one with light particle beam. Google Frog's commander at level zero. Strike commander, which has not been upgraded yet. I don't know what they're planning on going for. At this point. All that can be seen is the Raiders. And Google Frog actually has an advantage here. Google Frog has about 9 bandits to 4 glaives. And bandits are more effective one-on-one -on -one against glaives. They're about the same cost effectiveness, but in terms of individual unit effectiveness, bandits win out. That being said, at this stage in the game, micromanagement still matters a great deal. Good use of retreat micro, good use of positioning, those still matter a lot. And good use of repair as well, given that bandits do not auto-heal, unlike glaives. That seems a little bit trivial, but that's definitely worth it. This stage, at this level of play, that and this stage of the game, that is key. Repairing those bandits is going to be a big deal. Unfortunately, on the other hand, a bandit did just get lost. Some of the bandits over in the east side out of position, there is a nice little defensive setup, so Goofrog... They aren't naked over on the east side of the map, however they aren't expanding as quickly as Drone is, and Drone, they are expanding quickly, they're actually not expanding that nakedly either. And the bandits, they are going to have to deal with this warrior, or at least get away from the warrior. That warrior is going to be a problem. There are enough warriors, and Drone, being that they are on a corner start, I've mentioned before, corner starts are a little risky because they allow you to be contained, but the upside to corner starts that I didn't mention in that game is that they allow you to focus more on slower units. Yeah, you can be contained, but you can also focus on these slower units that allow you to just tear apart your opponent's raiders. So you can be contained, but you can also build up slowly and just build in waves, breaking out slowly from, like, slowly wave after wave after wave until your opponent basically can't penetrate your base. They try to do so, and they lose everything to riot units, they lose everything to defenders, to lotuses. It's just really hard to get in. That's actually a bit of a problem that the North player has, is they have a harder time defending than the South player does. And the North player has an easy time getting around and building up. They have a larger territory to deal with. For the South player, well, they have a smaller territory to deal with, so they're, it's easier to contain them, but it's also easier to defend. And a Tick moving in a position to get rid of these bandits, and down those bandits go! Stunned out by the Tick, and Glaives come in to finish them off, so those bandits from Google Frog. Unfortunately, did not deal as much damage as I'm sure they would like to. And a scythe coming in from Drone has been spotted out by the bandits. There we go. Gets... Nope. Doesn't get rid of the scythe. Gets aware of the scythe. Which is still pretty key. Managed to hit it before it cloaks. Gets... That was a good play. Because hitting it before it's cloaked is extremely important if you want to make sure you get rid of the thing. Otherwise, it'll cloak and finding it is going to be a pain. But yeah, when units take damage, they do decloak. And this is pretty much the moment of truth. Drone will be able to dis destroy most of these bandits. The rogues, where are those rogues? They need, they're out of position. The rogues are at the front lines trying to prevent anything else from coming in, but there's nothing else coming in besides this. This is the main attack force, and the rogues are not in position. There are thugs, which will soon be in position, but this, this is dead. The northwest side, dead. The factory, threatened, but not totally dead. 
The Rogues, however, did stay in position, and actually that will cause them to get rid of the Rockos, which is pretty good, but Google Frog's commander, way too threatened right now. And over the north side, Drone is... They are not losing too many units here. The Warriors, they got rid of one of the Thugs. The second Thug will be able to get rid of one of the Warriors. And the center of the map, the commander's gone down. Google Frog lost their commander, lost most of their Rogues in the process. And that is game. Goofrog throws in the towel. Game one goes to Drone. Which was... I mean, it was easy enough to defend, I suppose. And they, they just pushed forward. They had what they needed at the time. And I think lost the commander. More so the loss of the rogues near the commander. Probably is what did it in. They did have the riot cannon, but against the against rockers, that's not that big of a deal. And yeah, out expanded. That's the big thing. Go to pointing out... And that was totally it. Drone just built more metal extractors. Oops. Drone just had more metal extractors. That's the thing. They just... They were better prepared in that regard. And it looks like... Google Frog trying to find a map they like. Not really thinking of any offhand. Just... Just sifting through all the maps to figure out which one of them they want to play on. And Intersection 3. Intersection version 3, that is what we're playing on right now. Well, Intersection, because the version, we just play the latest versions. Game 2 on Intersection. So we are going to... Oh, I am... All right, so I'm going to have Kane join up. Ch Kane has... Hello. Hello, Kane. Hey, how's it going, guys? So... Or Shadow. <laughs> there are other people watching. There are people watching. I have That's I have right. an audience. I have an audience. <laughs> I'm not... That's right. Huh? How's it going, everyone? Good morning. Okay, so yeah, this... It's Kane. I, the voice should be familiar if you've seen any of their casts. Because they do stuff. Yep, good game so far, huh? Oh, what the heck? Why is that? How in the world did... Oh, darn it, Skype! Ah. Stupid thing. I don't know why I did that. It just it just got in the way of my bracket page. Oh. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to be watching Google Frog and Drone on game two. The game has already started. Yep. And Drone, east, southeast side of the map, Google Frog on the northwest side of the map... Google Frog having lost game one, but Drone... Well, let's see how they play on this. Light Vehicle Mirror, interesting matchup here. On the intersection, I'm not surprised. Oh no, not at all. But it'll be good to see how they play it. It will. It looks like Google Frog is... Google Frog is being much more aggressive. Drone going for the support comm in the base. Pushing forward with the workers instead, while Google Frog does the opposite. Pushes back with workers, pushes forward with the strike commander. How that plays out will be interesting because at this point Google Frog doesn't really have I don't know. And they have their scorchers. Sorry, their slashers. They don't have any scorchers. There are no scorchers. There's one from drone. That's about it. But yeah, there's no real raiding firepower from Google Frog. There's nothing they can really do to deal with drone directly. Mm, yeah, it looks like he's going for a bit of a like a creeping perimeter expand, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah Google Frog loves that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a really good play here, especially if you take control of the corners, of course. Well, that's, that is intersection in a nutshell. Yep. Is take the corners, take these corners over here and over here and win. That is how the game plays. Well, that is how this map plays. Which is the entire point. If Sashoth were here, if Sashoth were casting with, uh, with us, which unfortunately they are not here right now. But if they were, they would say that they made this map for that purpose. Because they made this map for that purpose. Yep, that's absolutely right. So we have... Oh, one sec. Entertain the stream for a second. <laughs> Just, okay, I'll try to be entertained. We see uh, Scorcher chasing away one of Google Frog's scouts here up to the northeast. Not a lot of contention over here to this northeastern plateau quite yet. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see all of that on Shadow off your screen quite yet. But yeah, it looks like we have a couple of workers coming out to expand with Commander Swell from Drone here. Heading towards the north, so it's like a bit of a slow creep from him as well. Some slashes coming out here. So it looks like both players 
investing pretty heavily into slasher composition, at least at the moment. And a, uh, was that a riot cannon there on Google? Yep, Frogs that is a riot cannon. They are basically going for a walking leveler, which Beautiful. against the Scorchers is the best option, actually. They're great with the slashers, too. Yeah, admittedly, the slashers, how many slashers does Google Frog even have? A three so far. Drone is three as well, so they're pretty even on that. Google Frog being much more defensive in their posture, though. Wants to guard each of the ramps, wants to guard the front as well, the expansion. While Drone, they're just pushing forward. They're covering a very small area, but penetrating that's going to be difficult. Well, that's understandable Breaking given that. the way that Drone sort of broke his way into Google Frog's position in the last game. To oh, play yeah. A bit more defensively on this one. Well, that's exactly right. Although, at the same time, Drone was playing. Drone was on the defensive side. I mean, Battle for Planet mm -hmm. 17, the south side is the defense side. That's just how that map tends to work. Yeah. So that was more... That was forced on Google Frog rather than being anything to do with the way Google Frog wanted to play that match out. Mm -hmm. But Google Frog, in this case, they... They surprisingly don't have a whole lot of static defense. Nothing no, really up like the ramp. it looks like they'll be relying mostly on those slashes. Pretty big engagement brewing here in the center. Or at least mm -hmm. there's some forces lining up here. Commander's there to support as well. Yeah, well, the thing is, slashes are mo they're mobile defenders, but at the same time... The point is more so the position they're in. Like, are they going to be out of right. position, in position? Having defenders and lotuses, at least, that's constantly in position. And down goes the slasher over to the west side of the map. I thought that would have had a chance, but no, it does not. That's... Oh, that lotus too? No! Tro Google Frog, you've lost everything! Oh, you're yeah, not quite. Barely able to get it with the Barely. Scorcher. Yep, yep, saving the day. And here's a bit of that uh, positional play we were talking about with the slashers. A lot of it has to do with whose slashers are in position first. Yeah, and it looks like, well, this is what I mean by drone, just, they have a better position. They're pushing everything forward, they're keeping everything in place. Mm -hmm. But that's, that only works so well, I guess? I don't know how to really I, put that. I see a few Scorchers here from Google Frog. He could come over and flank, uh, especially if they're in transit. He's taking here with the Ravager. This is a nice play, and then he's diving these Scorchers in beautifully. It should clean up these Slashes if they can catch up to him. Oh, that was excellent. Look at that. Yeah. Going in to dive the commander as well. This That's not going to work out danger. though. Oh, not quite. No, but, uh, it's in the it's far from working out. Repair it. This is definitely a big threat for drone. No, he's just going to fortify no. and try to hold the position. Drone doesn't like to fall back and repair like that. This it's is, that's uh, not what they're going to do at all. That is not aggressive. their style. Yeah, I guess not. Hey, they're they have enough forces here that they can just they can keep it alive. They might build a caretaker at some point just to keep it up. I don't see any masons coming in though. See, so, yeah, caretaker could do it. Over to the southwest, Drone has expanded a bit. So Drone is ahead economically, just very slightly, but does have a great position to keep going. Google Frog knows much. Google Frog does not have the northeast. Google Frog does not have the center. Drone has the center. That's that's pretty much how this game is going to go, I think. Looks like Google Frog's committing to a uh, Ravager switch here, trying to build up a critical mass so we can just try and steamroll these slashers. I, I can see the logic there. They're kind of slow, they're stationary, and Ravagers have a lot of health, so they can tank their slasher shots. On the other hand, I am not sure how cost-effective that would be. Because Ravagers, they're 220 to Slashers 140. Mm -hmm. Whereas, on the other hand, some, how expensive are... Okay, Scorchers are 130. So yeah, Scorchers aren't as cost-effective. Although, admittedly, in large enough numbers, Scorchers could work. It's more the positioning. Because of yeah, all these yeah. defenses, you can't send Scorchers in. So the Ravagers yeah, are the next cool. best choice. Especially with those Slashers in position to sort of hammer down on them. I'm not sure a Scorcher, Scorcher could even get close. See these yeah. ravages just barely surviving a few salvos. And also just I point out there's about a thousand metal in the middle of reclaim that drone is taking right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That'll probably tip it. Oh, that's a huge deal. I mean, there's a caretaker in the base. There's enough to deal with, yeah, easily to deal with 23 income. Another caretaker being built up just in case. Just make sure any spikes come in, any workers come in, that's going to work fine. But man, that's going to be, that's going to be a possible issue. We'll see how that goes, but this... This is not looking good for Google Frog. They, they do have the Ravagers though. Yeah, see, I feel like he has, you know, still quite a few chances here, especially if he heads in like through the northeast. I, I don't think he has to pay so much attention to the center because drones just mostly taking a defensive position. But there's so many avenues into drones base that Google Frog can take, and he has the mobility advantage I think with these Ravagers, given uh, given drones score or slasher composition. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I just think that the Ravagers. Oh wait, there's Wolverines here. Okay, that changes things up quite a lot. Because mm -hmm. that yeah, will this... deal with these Scorchers. 
Yeah, that should help uh, dislodge drone's position here in the center as well. Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Wolverines do defeat defender nests. That's definitely true. Very good point. I'm just thinking because the one thing about Ravagers, they get countered by the Scorchers, but the Scorchers, they're going to have to deal with the landmines, and that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Google Frog keeping on the ball when it comes to the unit This is decisions. a great answer, I, I think. I, I mean, from this position, I think this is his best bet. Yeah, the only downside, however, Drone does have the center reclaimed. They got all of it. They have yeah. the Northeast. They have... Well, they just have a large army coming in. They have Ravagers coming in. Google Frog going for the Scorchers to deal with that in advance. The center, however, oh, one thing. Look at the way the center is laid out for drone. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially with the northeast getting destroyed, the center could be surrounded. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Like drone is in a really vulnerable position. They're cutting forward, but they so could be risky. surrounded. Mm -hmm. That's the that's what Google Frog probably needs to do at this point. I is to try Google, to get around. Yeah, he could definitely squeeze in through the southwest part of the center here. Um, that's really almost completely undefended. Now, whether Google Frog realizes this, I don't know. I don't think yeah, Google Frog... Yeah, it's always hard to figure that out in the heat of the battle. Google Frog does know this. They have radar coverage over that entire southwest side. They know it's empty. Oh, wow. Well, look at this um, this worker push on the southwest by Google Frog. Nice. This is, uh, this is pretty brave. <laughs> it'll work. Oh, well, it'll mostly work. If, if Defender else, Lotus War. Yeah. It'll keep Drone from uh, walking into the base through that direction anyway. Definitely. That's the, probably the biggest thing. Just to make Scorcher's sure Scorcher's heading up on knowledge. the northeast hill here from Google Frog. Is that going to Raider? That's going to finish it off. That's the entire yeah. point. Drone Definitely. should be able to defend this. They're going to build another couple. Okay, got a defender as well. Actually, Drone, they're, they're aware of this. They know this is coming. Mm -hmm. So they're not ignorant to it. It's just that they're or blind to it, rather. Looks like Drone's starting to push with his own Ravager level this is, ball here. Okay, this is all or nothing. This is beautiful. If if Drone does not get pull this off, Google Frog is going to be able to push through, break the center, I and think then he might probably get in win the game. Here. He just he doesn't even need to worry about the LT. He should just run by it. No, this is unfortunately not in the best position. A Shieldbot Factory Switch was done. No, not Shieldbot. That looked like Bandits from a distance for some reason. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wolverines are in position. That's what's actually happening. That's the reality of the situation, not just my own fever dreams. And that's not going to do much good. Unfortunately. I don't know what Google Frog's going to do against these Ravagers in his base. He has just well, some Wolverines here to defend. They're going around the backside, but they're forced I'm to retreat into the base. This is the best position Drone can be in. I've mentioned before in many of my casts that what you want to be, because Retreat Micro is so powerful, what you want to do is make sure that your opponent is forced to retreat against you. There's no mm -hmm. other way they can approach you than retreat. But at the same time, Google Frog making sure to get rid of Drone's commander. Going for the dive, and that dive oh, will succeed. Beautiful. There it goes. But Drone at the same time has taken out Google Frog's entire base. So Google Frog has no economy. They have their factory, but even that is... They've just got the Ravagers in place. So even that's going to be risky. And Drone losing their commander, while a bit of a big deal, they just they took advantage of it already. They yeah. took the reclaim. They took the position. The southwest side of the center is still open, but at the same time, it's, what it's does Google Frog have? Yeah. yeah, there's nothing There's nothing left. This game is uh, pretty much sealed. Wow, this is a great series for Drone, huh? He just played this excellently. Wow, I mean, I thought Drone would take it, but I didn't. Expect, I thought it'd be two one. Yeah, yeah, these like have been close some pretty decisive victories too. This was, uh, I mean, just really impressive from Drone. I can't say it enough. Oh, and Sprang pointing out terraforming would have been the answer. Yeah, that's not a bad idea either. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, terraforming along that ramp on the west side, that that southwest ramp, or at least bought him some time so he could respond. Well, yeah, because Google Frog, they had the north, they had the north side completely locked down. But the mm -hmm. south side, the southwest side of their base, they didn't have anything yep. there. So terraforming that ramp would have definitely done it. But no one really thinks to terraform, especially against vehicles where terraforming is extremely devastating. Mm -hmm. But no one seems to think to do it. It's, I, mean, I think it's the interface. Other than the fact that you can now terraform buildings easily onto a position, terraforming mm -hmm. just a position, then it's like you have to click on any builder, then V, then, one, then something from Z through B, then right. you have to draw it out and they have to raise it up it's like a five-step process plus you don't see it very much in 1v1 so it's not like you know at the top of your mind no no it isn't think of i've seen it the only times i've ever really seen it is if i'm playing against spider factory on something like ravaged mm -hmm. and even then that was like one time i saw it with spider one time i saw it, i think with jumpy and although the jumpy one was they cut off half the ramp that was mm -hmm. a pain <laughs> I was still able to win, but it took me a while to get in. I had cut off half the ramp. They had put a Newton there. There's actually one of the screenshots that I have that goes through there. That's actually from that game where one of my rockets is thrown into the air before firing the rocket that destroyed the Newton from midair. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's it's a pretty cool shot. I'm not going to show it right now because game, but yeah, I show it all the time. So. Sure. If you're cur anyone is watching is curious about that, my other streams, they, it pops up all the time. Google Frog is not giving up without a fight. He's really trying to make a hold here. He's already rebuilt his own base. I mean, oh yeah, this is not surprising at all. The, the Wolverine Mines will be able to keep this in a good position. The Rapiers are the big problem, though. Oh, definitely. Drone, yeah, I don't think Google has an answer to that. Well, Drone can make an answer quickly enough. That's not the problem so much. I mean, for one thing, Rapiers are close enough to the ground that most fairly powerful Grand Units can deal with them. Like, Levelers can deal with them. So, wow, Drone really does have tanky, answers. Though. I didn't realize how much HP they had. 1100. Oh, That's yeah. more than a Raven. Oh, That's yeah. No, ra no, no, no. See, the thing with gunships, you gotta remember, gunships are basically flying tanks. Flying tanks, yeah. That is their role. Mm -hmm. As opposed to air, which is just, it goes in and attacks and leaves. So, air tends to be weaker. It tends to be more glass cannony. Mm -hmm. While gunships tend to be much tougher, but have a lower DPS. Just because they can stay in the area and attack. Right. And also more status effects early on, too. I do like that change, though, that was made, mm -hmm. where everything became Definitely. more status-focused, especially in C. Anyway, that's aside. The problem right now, Google Frog getting distracted by these rapiers. I mean, I can see why they're not moving in, but at the same time, those rapiers aren't going down fast enough. The raptors can't deal with them. The levelers can, but there's only, like, one leveler in this group. And the raptors, if they get lucky, they get lucky they hit. And they're getting lucky decently enough. Often enough, but at the same time, it doesn't matter. Drone has the entire map. Yeah, Drone has I mean, Google Frog contained. What do you do to come back from a situation like this? I Like, if it were me, Game if three. I had played <laughs> out, I think I'd hunker down, I'd pork at my base, I'd use all of this reclaim here, and maybe, I don't know, build a silo or something? Like, it would be something crazy like that. You'd need crowd control played. of that sort, yes. Yeah, the, I mean, you really need a trump card here, you know, if you're planning to pull this one out. Well, uh, to I Google think... Frog's credit, he's definitely holding a lot better than most players would in a position like this. Yeah, I think the best thing you can really do is... See, your opponent's gone for expansion mm. because you've gone for defense. And a lot of it, I mean, if they're going for a, a well-defended expansion, you can't really do this. But if they're going for a naked expansion, which players often do, because mm. oftentimes players don't really think... Because there's sort of that triangle of expand, defend, attack. Sure. Expansion defeats defense, defeats attack, defeats expansion. But a lot of times players don't go two steps ahead and mm -hmm. realize, oh, my opponent's probably going to counter my expansion with an attack because they're defending, uh. they're going to switch to attack, and then defend on their own. So... Oftentimes, when expansions like this occur, they're naked, or they have one wall of defenses, and other angles are completely vulnerable. And that's exactly what we see right now, in fact. Mm -hmm. Google Frog could attack the center fairly easily, could, from the center, go over to the southwest from the south side. It's a bit tricky, but they could. Same yeah. with the north northeast from the east side. So they have to take the long way around, but at the same time, there is a path to do so. Very, but the thing is, they need to um, stockpile units first. Right. It's just, it's always hard to, you know, um, like I said, discover those sorts of access routes and then actually execute them in the heat of a battle while you're usually defending a push from your opponent from the spectator view you know we can always pick out a path that's that true and actually i should point out in if you see google frog's view you see that they have no idea yeah they don't know how google how drones really set up they probably remember certain things so they know they have a decent idea but they don't have direct knowledge at the moment mm. so they can infer but they can't truly know unless they build radar up front in which case they can know but at this point, that is not the case, and the Rapiers are being stockpiled at this point. There are the five we see. That's all we see. That's all there is. But at the same time, there's... There's enough alpha and slow damage here yeah. to take out all of these levelers, no sweat. I feel like these Rapiers could even head into the base. They're being just a little bit overcautious here. There's really nothing to defend um, in the base itself. Just this uh, one race that's gone up recently. Yeah, that's about it. There's no defenders. Yeah, there are no defenders. Wow, the entire base is completely... Once again, as with the rest of this game, Google uh, Frog has had no static D. Looks like we're about to see just that. Creeping yeah. up the ramp right now. Well, Drone would do that, and that is probably yeah. in the game. Looking pretty pretty bleak here for Google Frog at this point. They do but, have the I mean, Razor. They yeah, do have... Oh, second Razor just gone up in the middle of the base. No, that's going to push him right out. Yes, so, that uh, will help, but the loss of the caretaker isn't pretty. However, I mean, if they had anti-air, oh, the thing is, Levy Eagles doesn't really have much in the way of anti-air. That's the one problem. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely. don't. They have slashers and they have crashers, but against rapiers, I don't know if that'd be the best investment. I don't think it'd be the best investment. I mean, it'd be one of those things that basically would be done to cause Google Frog to waste money. Google Frog cannot afford to waste money like that. Mm -hmm. They need to make sure that they just are winning every fight, almost without losing units. Which yeah, is almost impossible. 
some incredible attrition to come back from something like this. Yeah, or crowd control, which they don't really have. And something like Nuke Silo, yeah, they could do that, but it'd be, it'd be very all or nothing. They'd have... <laughs> yeah. What would they have? Absolutely. Like, yeah, exactly. They'd spend their money. They'd have no units on the field. And then Google Frog would realize... Oh, sorry, Drone would realize, Oh, Google Oof. Frog, they're completely undefended. I'll just win then, shall I? Yeah. And Google go. Frog throws in the towel. With a the valiant defense, but... Very understandable. Is. Yeah, this is a pretty good game. I feel like Drone established dominance pretty quickly there. Yeah, that was that was a game. <laughs> yep, definitely. That game happened. Certainly occurred. I can confirm this. We have a witness. We have gotten a witness. So what do you think what do you think Google Frog needed to do there to prevent drone from uh from establishing that sort of position? Well, okay. The thing that I think really tipped it was the fact that Google Frog did not have that south that south ramp in any way defended. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. like I said, Google Frog, I mean, Drone went for that attack. If Drone had lost all those units, Google Frog could have counterattacked, torn apart the center, torn apart the commander, right. and there would have been nothing behind it. It would have gone no completely the, the other way. Mm -hmm. Like I yeah, said, that, right. was, that was all or nothing. So it was that one point, I think, that really determined what was going on one way or the other. Yeah, I would agree with that, especially given how Google Frog was, uh, well, at least working his way towards a comeback and dislodging Drone from the center, like I said, with his artillery and the assault units. He was really well geared to, uh, you know, retake that position. But once Drone slipped those units up the ramp, that's really, that was the beginning of the end, wasn't it? Pretty much. There, there wasn't much more you could say about that. I think the one thing, though, is that Drone, Drone did have, they had, a, I mean, they had a good position from the start as well. Like that that can't be denied. They did have a good position right from mm -hmm. the start of the game. Absolutely. So I'm not going to take that from them. There's no taking that from them. Yeah, it was interesting to see just how quick he was to get his commander down into the center and start to establishing some defenses there. I mean, ultimately it paid off. It kept Google Frog from taking the center early and uh, made it really hard to dislodge him later on heading towards the middle 